This is section 6.1, areas between curves. In this session, we will try to use the integrals to find the area of the region that lies between the graphs of two or even more functions. One thing that we would like to uh, pay attention to is finding the areas between two curves is the application of the integral. And we will apply the integration. And we suppose to not to be confused with these areas and just the net area. Net area is just the evaluation of the integral. We can say definition of the integral. For instance, when we will have the integral uh, from negative 2 to the positive 2, let's just say x dx. Right? We may evaluate this explicitly, but we can also look at the net area. Yes? I hope everybody knows at that moment that this is zero because x yeah, is an odd function and between negative 2 oh, and positive 2, this is the net area because it's the area between the x-axis and, and the curve. Yeah. That's been evaluating this. We may evaluate, but I can also use this. We can see that triangle will have positive value. The integral, this will be negative. They are identical, symmetrical. The answer is zero. That means that's what we would like to avoid. If the question will ask, find the area of the region, which is bounded by x function, y equals to x and the x-axis, then we can see, then we I can maybe use different color. We need the area of this and we need the area of this. That's when we actually have two triangles and the answer will be positive. We simply have to set up different integral. We will use the integral to this. It will be a little bit different integral. Right? That means just please be like, yes, always, yeah alert. In general, we can say finding the areas, we're supposed to not get zero. Okay, but this was just the integral. Let's start. Okay, what I have, oh, actually I have this. That means let's consider the region S which lies between f of x and g of x, like we can see on the graph, um, and we have to find the area. We may start, yeah, like the same way like we were introducing the integrals. We don't know, it's not a regular shape. We don't know like how to find, it's not a, it's not a square, it's not a rectangle, it's not a triangle because we have a curves f of x, g of x. That means we will try to divide this uh, interval from A to B by sub-intervals creating these stripes and taking maybe one of them at the moment. Okay, let's say this one. Creating a left-hand side or right-hand side. We don't have to focus at the moment at this one, but let's try to find the area of this one rectangle. That means the area of the rectangle is base times height. Of course, base, each base is yeah, that base. This, the length of a subinterval is delta x. We remember this. Okay, that means area of this rectangle is height times base. Base is base is delta x. Right? I can say this height. Now height, it's value of this subinterval. Yeah, it's a vertical oh. interval. And the value on the top is f of x because that's function f of x. The value at the bottom is g of x. And if we would like to get the length of a vertical interval, we need to subtract the top value minus the bottom. We can see the relation. f of x minus g of x will give us that height. And that's mean I can say f of x minus g of x. And that's mean this is the height and this is the base delta x. Okay, that means this is one, but what we want, we would like to add all of them. Now I can say this was just one, right? just one rectangle. Now let's add all of them. So we will still have f of x sub 
i minus g of x sub i, the sample points, because we will take like different sample points, and then we will add them from 1 to n. We have n of those times delta x. I'm just repeating. And now n means number of these rectangles. We remember also if n is infinity, yeah, the, the delta x is almost zero, teeny tiny. It's a perfect approximation. Yeah, then I can say this is still yeah, this is still approximation, approximation. But now I can say equal, and I can repeat everything. The summation of the areas of the rectangles. This is height difference between functions. That's height times base, and n we would like to be infinity. N goes to the infinity. Okay, and now you can easily tell that the limit of the sum, limit of the sum, is basically a definite integral. And everything is happening between A and B, the slicing, and then it's a difference between the functions. You know, we have to know which one is on the top, which one is, and delta x, we know that becomes dx because the integration will happen with respect to x. Okay, that means this is the formula. We went a little bit through the definition, but to find the area between uh, two curves, um, we will just subtract uh, the top value of the, the top function minus the bottom function and integrate this between A and B. Okay, that's it. Let's start. And that's mean I do have, okay, that's the, I was typing, we can see this is the height. This is actually the area yes, of everything, the up all, the approximation. But if n is infinity, uh, we will have definite integral. Right? But we can say it's not just the integral of function f of x or g of x, it's the difference. And actually, let's look, and that difference, that difference will give us always positive number if f of x is greater than g of x. Okay, and yes, I mean, this is the limit definition, and this is the integral. That's when we will focus on definition number two. To find the area between two curves, if f of x is greater than g of x, we always have to figure out which function is on the top, top minus the bottom with respect to x, integral from a to b, okay? Excellent. Before we start, I also have this like little proof, yeah, just using the net area. So when we will have function f of x and g of x, hmm? um, if, I in, if we integrate, yeah, if we integrate just function f of x, this means that we will get the area between the f of x and x-axis, the red part. Okay, that's when the area under will be this one. Now, when we just integrate g of x, we can see we will get the blue part, which actually it's nicely defined, blue part. And we may realize subtracting the red part minus the blue part, we will get the golden part, which is between the curves. We can also think in terms of the net area. Hmm? But yeah, it will be definitely positive. And even if it's below the x-axis, we can still get because arithmetic will give us always positive value. Okay, that's it. Please remember the areas between two curves, when we are calculating, we should not get zero and we should not get negative values. Okay, let's start. Find the area, example number one, find the area of the region bounded by parabola x squared plus one, bounded above, above, that means this one is actually a really explicit instruction, bounded above by parabola x squared plus one, bounded below by the line y equals to x, you can see the blue line, and bounded on the sides between zero and one, that means vertical lines zero and one. We can see I have the graph, really nice, 
just uh, we don't need the entire parabola we don't need the entire line but probably that's what we will do we just have to cut it vert using the vertical lines <clears throat> zero and one and that's the region that's mean nothing almost nothing to think about we can just set up an integral between zero and one the top function is parabola minus the line is the second, the bottom function. Parabola x squared plus one minus x. Okay, and then so easy to integrate. We can even stop this question here, but I know that you would like to finish. You may pause the video now and try to integrate really quickly. This, this, and that's the final answer, five over six. Okay. But we can see that for this question, this is important to set up this correctly. And remember again, the answer will not be zero, will not be negative. If we getting this, we probably set up something like incorrectly. Okay, perfect. But this was nice example because it was telling us everything above below. Let's look at example number two. Find the area of the region enclosed by two parabolas, x squared and 2x minus x squared. Okay, that means first of all, we don't know which one is on the top, which one is on the bottom. We will figure out. Also, what is missing, the points, the limits of integration, like what is the interval that we would like to find the area of the region? Like how we can figure out this? That means if this is missing, we might think that both of the parabolas, both of the curves, could be different curves, they intersecting. That's we have to find the points of intersection. They probably creating like a region, the loop, because one parabola, it's open up, one parabola is open down. That means up and down, we will probably have the region between. Right? That's what we can think. Let's find. But we need these points of intersection. Okay, <laughs> I have the graph that we can see one parabola is open up, one parabola is open. I mean, the blue is up, the, the pink is down. Of course, negative leading coefficient positive. Okay, but let's find out. And I would like to make sure that we may all, you know how to sketch the graph of this parabola. X squared, everybody knows. Okay, that means X squared is equal to 2X minus X squared. Let's move all of the terms to one side add to one side, 2x squared minus 2x, factoring out 2x, x is 0 or x is 1, then the entire product is uh, 0, okay? That means 0, I can maybe use red color, 0 and 1. Okay. And as I mentioned, the blue parabola is easy, x squared, but how we can um, find uh, the graph of 2x minus x squared, we identified right away that is parabola, uh, open down because negative leading coefficient, we just need to know the zeros. And yeah, that's when we have, yeah, because if it's open down, I can draw this, I can draw like this, I can draw, and that means we need that zeros. If we have no zeros, it will be below. Okay, when I factor out x, it will be two, and we can see x is zero or x is two. Right, that means make yeah, be like confident with that. That means zero and two, and I can just draw like this. Yeah. And actually, this is a little bit nicer, but yeah, just to know the parabolas, we just need the x intercept and draw parabola. Okay, that's we okay with this one. Okay, and we can nicely see zero and one, that's the limits of integration between zero and one, the top curve minus the bottom. The top one is this parabola and minus, yes, minus the upper one, blue. Okay, and again, this second step is so important. Now everybody can integrate. I add the like terms and yeah, we may you may stop, but you may practice your integration, integrals, evaluation, yeah, the fundamental theorem of calculus, and the final answer is one third. The area is one third. Okay. Yeah. And again, positive number, not zero. We good. Yes, we definitely good. Okay. Example number oh. Okay, <laughs> let's see. I have example number three. I have more examples, but let's look at this one. 
We also have to be a little bit careful. Like we just we just uh, solve an example, like we had two curves and points of the intersection and it was obvious that the points of the intersection are just the only one. But we may also have a couple of points of the intersection. Yeah? They may intersect multiple times on the given interval. That's we may have the interval, like let's find the area between two curves between A and B, but even if the intervals are provided, we still have to figure out the points of the intersection. Yeah, this is the first point, let's say C sub one, C sub two, because what happened when they intersect, they change in the position. One is greater, one is lower, yeah? and the other way. That we will, in order to find the area, we will actually set up three integrals from A to C sub one, the red curve minus the blue one, and then between C sub one, C sub two, the blue minus red, and then the last in sub interval, red minus blue. Okay? In general, is the absolute value because the difference between two curves, absolute value will always give us positive, then we have to use the definition. But if we see the graph, if we think about the graph, that's what we will set up the integrals. That's in please now, from now on, if the curve especially is a little bit more complicated, please do so. Okay, let's see. Oh, I have a definition. That means now we are getting a little bit more advanced. The area between two curves, it is a difference, yeah? f of x minus g of x. And if f of x is greater, then we don't need absolute value. But if f of x is smaller, then this will be negative, and automatically absolute value will dictate that this will become positive. That means this is the proper definition. Difference between two curves, but absolute value. If you know that f of x is greater, then we don't need absolute value. Or we may have different like points of the intersection, then we have to split. OK, let's see. Find the region, uh, find the area of the region bounded by curves, sine of x and cosine of x between and x equals to 0 and x equals to pi over 2. That means x equals to 0, vertical line, actually y-axis, x equals to pi over 2, another vertical line, pi over 2. OK. That's we may notice between zero and pi over two, sine of x and cosine of x, they intersect. So first of all, let's find the points of intersection. Sine of x equals to cosine of x. You can probably guess right away, I mean educated guess, that sine function and cosine function are exactly the same at 45, pi over four. Right, but how we can explicitly solve this? I can divide both sides by cosine of x. Okay, assuming that cosine is not zero, but it's zero at the endpoints, but we not. And then sine of x over cosine of x is tangent. Now tangent for what angle is one? Pi over four. We also have another quadrant first, but we may notice we only in the first quadrant between zero and pi over two. That means this is, but we knew it, we knew it. This is nice explicit way. Now let's look at the graph. I have beautiful graph, sine function, cosine function between zero and pi over two. We have this point of intersection. That's we will definitely set up two integrals between zero and pi over four and pi over four to pi over two. Cosine minus sine, sine minus cosine. And that's what we will do. Okay, in general is this, just the absolute value. But now we know that we have to split between zero and pi over two will be cosine minus sine. And then, oh, something is, oh, because I, okay, plus we adding, we adding, okay, between pi over four and pi over two function psi of x minus cosine of x. We can also do this way, but let's just, okay, let's just do this way. That's when we have first integral representing the area of the, the pink region, plus we adding, of course, adding the second subinterval representing the area of the blue region, sine is on the top minus cosine. Also what we realize, they are identical because we know how beautifully symmetric they are. 
And then we may use the symmetry to simplify our calculation. That means I can maybe choose one of those because evaluating the first integral and evaluating the second integral, we will get the same answer. A sub one equals to A sub two. Then I choose the first one, yeah, cosine minus sine from zero to pi over four dx, and I will multiply by two. You may try. You may try to evaluate this one, then plus this one, but it will be the same thing, okay? Integral, evaluation, unit circle, values, and final answer. You may try. I'm going a little bit faster because I know how confident my students are evaluating uh, simple integrals. And that's what we can see. Important part is, yeah, this one will be good answer, I think. Setting an integral that represents the area of both, of both. Or oh, the second, second line is even more details. We've corrected. Okay. Sign of x over cos, I'm just checking. Okay. Excellent. Example number four. Find the area of the region enclosed by the function x and x cubed. Oh, so nice and simple. But yeah, let's let's think. We do not have um, any limits a and b, not sub interval. Let's find the points of the intersection. x equals to x cubed. Let's add everything on one side, factor out, factor out, and then zero product property. In order for this product to be zero, x must be zero or one or negative one. Okay. And that's the graph. We all know y, x. This is function x. This is function x cubed. Zero and negative one. Oh, I wanted to. It's actually good. No, the scale is good. One. I mean, that's the points of intersection. And then we have that part. Okay. And we will have this part. And we can see they intersect. And let's get the red. Okay. After points of the intersection, they changing. They changing the position. Okay. But we can also one thing. Yes, one thing. If this will be your multiple choice question, for instance, and one of the options will indicate zero, please do not select zero. Even if we think probably, probably most of us was thinking for a second, oh, wait a minute, the answer is zero. Yes, if we will just maybe, I mean, it's still two curves, but if this will be just the net area, it will be zero. Yeah. But we're looking for the area. You can see I did trade the blue. We have the area. It has to be positive. Okay, that's me. First of all, oh, what I did. I use the symmetry right away. We know that both of them are even functions, not even, oh, odd, odd functions. Uh, and that region is exactly the same like this one. That's when we may set up one integral. I did set up from zero to one, the red curve, which is line X minus blue minus parabola, X minus X cubed, and I did multiply by two. Uh -huh. You may still evaluate both of the integrals, yeah, this one and this one, which actually I can maybe just write this area, area one will be from zero to one, which actually we have it line minus third degree. Okay, this area a sub two will be from negative one to zero. We have to be exact. The top is x cube minus the bottom x. And if you will evaluate this one, this one is a sub one, and this one, you will get the same answer as, as evaluating one of them and multiplying by two. Okay? Integral, evaluation, multiplying by two. One half is the total. That means we will probably get one four plus one four. No negatives. Yes, no negatives. Okay? I mean, that's also really nice. Okay, another example. Let's keep, yeah, keep working. Oh, 
Find the area of the region enclosed by the function y equals to x plus 2, y equals to square root of x. I just put this way, y equals to 2, y equals to 0. So what we can do, before I start looking at the points of the intersection, seeing these functions to be relatively uh, simple, let's draw them. x plus 2 is the line. And that means this is x plus 2. It's just the line with the slope 1, x, y intercept 2. Square root of x, we also know that's square root of x. Now, when I will draw the line horizontal, y equals to 2, we're intersecting, but square root of 4 uh, is 2. Then it's easy. And y equals to 0 is actually the x-axis. Okay, and we have a nice, we have a nice region between these curves. Okay, that's me. First of all, I would like to say something. <laughs> I mean, you we may set up, but you may probably notice that we have to split. Yeah? That's the points of the intersection. Let's, let's actually, we do have, yeah, x equals to four, that's point. That's point x equals to zero. Okay. Okay, that means just these two dots and oh, this one and this one x equals to negative two because it's intersecting with purple and red. And yeah, zero. For zero, we have actually two values. Okay, that's what we can see. We have to set up. Do I have this? Okay. In order to find the area, I believe we have different top functions. That's the first one will be like this one because the line is on the top. The second region, that's mean this one will be the first one. This is the second from zero to four. It's the green curve, which green curve is two minus the blue one. The blue one is square root of x. Let me do this. And the red one is x plus two. And actually the purple is the bottom is zero. Okay. As we can see, we definitely have to set up two integrals. The first region will be between negative two and zero, the top curve minus the bottom. I know it sounds funny, but let's just follow. And then everybody can calculate this. Now, the second region will be between zero and four. We know we get this. And the top curve is two minus the bottom square root of x. And you can integrate. And as we can see, we have to be careful different top values. But also what I would like to show you, I have this example one more time. We may integrate, we may set up this differently. Uh, we may set up this in terms of y. So this was this. Okay. And now the region one more time, because I even, you may probably notice on the previous slide, I even did not the vertical lines to shade this horizontal. So now if we think vertically with respect to y, because we can also do it from between zero. What color I can use? I can use maybe green. Between zero, because this is y equals to zero, and y equals to two. Yeah, we can use the same the same idea. It's mean the integral between zero and two with respect to y, uh, and then we may just subtract because we will need this height. If we think, if we think about the definition and the height of the rectangle, we need in order to get the length of a line segment, horizontal line segment, we need the right curve minus the left curve. Yeah, that means the same idea. Then we will have a total, but that right curve and the, the right and left must be in terms of y. Yeah, because we can see if you look like this direction, because right minus left will give us positive. Right is always on the right hand side is greater number. Okay, that means the right hand side curve is equal to square root of x, but we need to solve for x to get the y expression. That means this will be the right hand side. Um, what I need, I need this. That means this is 
the right curve is y squared. Uh, we did solve this one. This will represent the right-hand side curve. The left curve was defined y in terms of x. Now I need x in terms of y. Uh, just y minus 2. Am I right? That means this one will be y minus 2. Okay, that means just to let you know that we may also use integration with respect to y. And, but we can see 0 and 2 are the y values, y values between 0 and 2 yeah, horizontally. And a right hand side curve, y squared minus the left hand side, y minus 2. And you can also integrate and integrating the two integrals on the previous slides and integrating this, we're supposed to get the same answer. Okay, I will leave it this one for you to check. Okay, now let's look at this. This is the definition. If we notice that it's easier, not the top and the bottom, yeah, because this will be complicated. It's easier to actually find the difference on the entire region between the right curve and the left curve, we can use this to find the area. It's the same region, the same area. But we need the right-hand side curve in terms of y, the left-hand side curve in terms of y, and always is the right minus left. Yeah, because it's greater minus smaller, like top minus bottom. Okay? And the limits will be in terms of y also, between c and t. Okay? Let's solve the question. Oh, yeah, I was just flipping this <laughs> because when you flip this, you can kind of see the top and the bottom. That's mean theoretically the right hand side is the same like will represent the same like a top and the bottom. But of course, I don't want to I don't want to confuse you. And we can see like we have to think we have to solve the equation for X to have the Y formula in terms of Y, in terms of Y. That's the reason that is X. OK. Mm, let's let's look at this. Find the area enclosed by the line y equals to x minus one and a parabola. And the parabola is a little bit is the sideways. It's not y equals to x squared. It's actually x equals to y squared at some point if we solve for x. Y squared equals to two x plus six. Okay. I, mean, I would before I yes, because I typed a couple of things before we like let's maybe let's check one thing mm, when we have when we have x equals to y squared that parabola we know that is open to the right right when we will have x equals to negative y squared it is open to the left, yeah, to the negative side. Okay. Now, when I maybe let's use this one, x squared plus five, for instance, we will move to five. Negative y, I mean y squared plus five. Negative y squared, let's say plus five, we will move to five. If this will be minus five, we will have this. Minus five, we will have this. This is negative five, five. Just this is just a really rapid review um, and yeah that's basically what we need if we have some coefficient like let's say like one half maybe it will be just a little bit wider yeah? a little negative five that's mean will be a little bit wider because the values will be lower by one half and that's me that's the idea the same like moving the parabola up and down we can move the right and left when we subtracting something. Okay, that's me. First of all, let's find the points of intersection. What I will do, since we will solve this for x, y plus one, that means this is that function. And when we solve this one for x, it will be one half y squared minus three. Yeah, you can pause the video and solve this for x, subtracting six and dividing by two. Okay, points of intersection. Oh. Let me write this one more time. When we solve for x, we will subtract 6 and divide by 2. 1 half y squared minus 6 divided by 2. Okay. Okay. Let's that now let's take. We can see that we have x and we have another x, two curves. That's mean, oh, okay. 
Oh, let's maybe, because I have, uh, let's try to graph this really quickly, just. We can see one half y squared, that means this is something like this, and minus three, we will move it to three. Okay, that means this is the parabola. Really quick. Let's have nice proper. Okay, that means the blue one actually, the blue one is parabola, okay? and the line, you can even use the y x equation, x minus one, negative one is the y intercept. We don't even need that point and slope one, okay? But on this graph, we have everything. And that's mean I can say, I can say that this one is, we may notice, yeah, the left-hand side and the line is the right-hand side. And we have right-hand side curve, and the left-hand side. Let's find the points of intersection because we have them, five, four, and negative one, but let's find them. Oh, oh, I didn't type it. It's okay, let's do it. That's what we will need. Um, the left-hand side curve must be the same like the right-hand side. One half y squared minus three equals to y plus one. Let's multiply by two, y squared minus six, two y, plus two, and then y squared minus two y minus eight. And we can nicely, uh, four and two, correct? But this will be, let's wait, uh, negative two plus, okay? That's mean y equals to four, y equals to negative two. So we can see four and negative two. And we can substitute to the line four, um, four plus one is five and negative, uh, negative uh, two plus one is negative one. That's we have the corresponding X values because they are Y values. Okay, that's we have parabola, we have line and we can see loop, but in order to find the area, we will integrate with respect to y, because we can see it's easier this way, because we can nicely see the right-hand side and the left-hand side curve with respect to y. Right? That's the limits of integration are from negative two, the y value, up to four. The right-hand side is line, this one, y plus one, minus the left-hand side is this one, negative half y squared minus three, and everything, will be integrated with respect to y. And that's mean you can take your time and finish this integration, but the setting is really important, setting. If you integrate correctly, maybe we can just, what we will have, we will have negative one half y squared, and then we will have positive y, plus one plus three is four, right? because this is, so maybe this one will be easier. Okay, please integrate term by term, applying fundamental theorem of calculus and get the final answer. You will tell me later. <laughs> okay, you can put some comments or you can tell me during the class, either way. What is the answer to example number six? <laughs> okay, and I can tell you if it's correct or not. I know that you can evaluate. Okay, let's maybe do one more problem and we will be done with areas between the curves. Um, okay, we have to be careful with this. Okay, I have this nice multiple choice question, looks like the exam type question. Let's see. Let's don't miss this question. Set up, but do not evaluate. Oh, that's nice. An integral that represents the area of the region and close by y squared equals to x plus five, okay? And then y squared equals to three minus x. Okay, we see that that's the parabolas sidewise. We will integrate with respect to y and we can see all of the options are the integrals with respect to y. Okay, let's solve this one for x. x squared minus, y squared minus five. And this one will be, oh, negative y squared plus three, am I right? Because we will add x and subtract. That means this parabola, I don't have the graphs, but let's try. 
maybe points of intersection first. Okay, let's know. Let's let's set up, and then we will. Y squared minus five. That means this will be this negative five and positive y squared open to the right. Negative y squared plus three. Uh, uh, I think I think my scale is a little bit. This one will be open to the left hand side and plus three. That's maybe I can start with this one three. And maybe I can use blue one. Oh no, because we don't know if that's the points of the intersection. Let's maybe do. Uh, am I not? I just wanted to. Okay, we will see. That means this is negative five, this is positive three. But what we need actually, that point and this point, I don't know exactly if it's because we will say right and left. That's we need that A value and B value. And I can set up the integral. The area will be between A and B. And we may notice the right-hand side is which one? This one is the right-hand side. I mean, we will subtract the right-hand side. And actually blue, blue. And this one is the left-hand side. And we just need... Okay, that's me. Let's see. Points of intersection, maybe. Oh, I can I can put the integrals. So right hand side is negative y squared plus three minus y squared minus five, but we subtract it. Okay. Let me just put one more time. We will have negative y squared and negative y squared. We will have two negative y squared and positive three, positive five, because negative and subtracting negative eight. Oh, that's, we probably see this, but let's find the, okay, we have this one, eight minus two and eight minus two. Yeah, but, oh, it at the same, oh, we have some squares. <laughs> no, 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 we don't need this squares. We have to be careful, but let's actually find the points of intersection. Points of intersection. Uh, y squared minus five, the left-hand side equals to the left-hand, to the right-hand side, negative y squared plus three. When I add y squared, we will have this. And when I add, uh, five to the right hand side, eight dividing by two is four. Perfect. Plus or minus two. That means this one is negative two, this one is positive two. Okay, but please make sure that you know the points of the intersection, identifying the right hand side and identifying the left hand side. Okay, that we don't have to evaluate. This is the answer. And please make sure that, yes, it's, that's not a good option. Oh, that's crazy. And this is some extra, yes, distractors. Okay, perfect question for your test. Thank you and enjoy the areas of the curve. Thank you so much.